Hey YouTube, how you guys doing today? My beard is gray and my name is Trey. Hey, check this out, man. The CompTIA Linux Plus exam is hard, all right? Now, I don't say that to discourage you, only to encourage you, right? I don't say that to scare you, but only to prepare you, okay? It is very, very difficult. I mean, check this out, man. Look, look at the size of this book, man. Look at the size of this book. This right here is a direct indicator of how much information they want you to retain in order just to take this exam. I mean, now that I'm done and I've, I've passed the exam, I don't know what I'm going to do with this book for the remainder of my time. I, mean, I might use it as a reference or I might just start working out with it or something like that. I don't know. One thing I can assure you is absolutely doable and you will pass the exam on your first attempt. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the preparation time. How long did it take me to study for and pass this exam? We're going to go over the exam objectives and what you need to know that's going to be covered on the exam. We're going to go over a bunch of different study resources and the strategy you need to take any CompTIA exam and be successful if this is your first one. All right, so let's get started. All right, starting off, the preparation time. How long did it take for me to sit for and pass this exam? I literally passed this exam in four weeks preparation and study time. I don't have that much experience when it comes to the Linux kernel or the operating system or anything like that, but I did pass the Linux Essentials exam about a year ago, so I still remember a couple commands and stuff like that. All right, so what's some of the best study resources that I can recommend to you guys? Every time I take a certification exam, I always use four different resources. They are the exam objectives, a good video course, a good book, and practice tests. Those are the four things. All right, so starting off, exam objectives, right? First thing you want to do when you take any certification exam is you want to look at the exam objectives. That way you can get a sneak peek of what they're going to be testing on so that way you can go ahead and brush up on those specific topics by domain. This particular exam has five domains and they are hardware and system configuration, system operation and maintenance, security, Linux troubleshooting and diagnostics, and automation and scripting. You can see how the domains are broken down, exactly how each individual domain is weighted. You must achieve a passing score of 720 out of 900 in order to pass this exam. The type of questions that you're going to see on this exam are multiple choice and performance based questions. So for those of y'all that's not familiar with performance based questions, basically where you receive a question where it's going to say, hey, in order to complete this objective, you must type out this command or it might be a drag and drop type of situation like that. Those are your performance based questions, all right? They're heavily weighted. Now, when you look at the exam objectives is going to say hey you have about 90 questions but basically you can take away some of those questions based upon how many questions you get from the performance based questions all right so normally you'll see about you know out of like three or four performance based questions that's that takes up 15 answers in itself so then you're left with about 75 anywhere from 68 to 75 questions and you have a total of 90 minutes to complete the exam so if you can, right, it's always good to go ahead and print off those exam objectives. That way you can make little marks like, okay, do I know what grub is, right? When I come down to this command, do I know what LS mod will do? Do I know what the mod probe command is, right? So basically what you want to do is see if you can look up these exam topics. That way you know verbatim what each one of them represents. All right, so for number two, we're moving on to video courses. There are a couple of video courses that will help you out tremendously, all right? You can look at certain uh, websites like a Cloud Guru, they have a course that's on Linux. All right, if you're on LinkedIn, you have a premium subscription, they have a Linux course. All right, what I found in my just when I was going through and I was studying, the best resource that was available as far as video courses was from IT Pro TV. All right, so you can go to IT Pro TV, you know, you can pay for their subscription, or you can click on the link. I have a link in the description where you can go to iCollege and just buy the course outright, right? But IT Pro TV was definitely the best resource that I found and I use personally in order to pass the exam. All right, so with books, like for me, Uncle Trey, right, I am always going to stand behind the Cybex brand, all right? They make very, very good books. I know it's thick, but you know, most of the times they're very well written. And then also these books come with a free practice test that you can also use too, right? So that's all, that's always a plus. So this book had a lot of useful information when it came like to looking at those exam topics. If I didn't know, I just went to the glossary, looked up the definition real quick and said, okay. And that's how I kind of, you know, soaked that information in my mind. All right, so the, and then the next book I recommend is How Linux works so I'm not just recommending these books I actually bought them myself I'll leave a link to the description so y'all can check it out 
But this book right here is very, very good for just breaking down, you know, how the Linux operating system works and it goes through commands and stuff like that to help you get a grasp of what you need to know. All right. So even though I've already passed, I'm still reading through this one and I'm going to add this one to my little library. I'll leave a link to both of those books in the description so you don't have to go looking for it, right? All right, so look, now that you got the study material out the way, one thing that you must do with this exam, right? You must lab. And what I mean by lab is you must practice. You must practice using these commands. This is not like, you know, Security Plus, you know, or, you know, other type of certification exams where you can kind of depend mostly or, you know, rely heavily upon rote memorization. With this one, you're going to have to actually lab. So what I recommend as far as labbing goes, right, the practicing of the commands that you go to a website called VirtualBox and you can download VirtualBox on your Windows or Mac machine or whatever the case may be. All right. And you can actually download it there. There's plenty of videos on YouTube of how to download VirtualBox. But that way, you can set up a Linux machine on your actual desktop or your laptop without having to like erase your whole operating system. This right here was instrumental in helping me pass the exam. So I recommend it to all of you. Please go to VirtualBox and download the software. That way you can get started on practicing these commands. Or what you can do, right? Like I bought from, you know, I bought this little guy right here. This is a Raspberry Pi. You know, you can buy a Raspberry Pi. If you don't want to download any software, you can actually buy a Raspberry Pi and you can practice with the Raspbian distribution as well. All right, I'll also leave a link to this in the description. This right here is very helpful, you know, for me, like going through the commands and also trying to teach my kids about Linux too. So that's very cool. All right, so as far as overall, you know, my overall exam review, I would just say, you know, for me personally, I don't know, you know, it depends on your experience with Linux, but like for me personally, right, this, this was my sixth CompTIA exam and it was definitely the most challenging one like when I was taking it the whole time I was like boy you failing you are failing you are failing you are failing you know what I mean that's what I was thinking the whole time I took it and when I got my passing score I was just so surprised but you know I put in a lot of work um, as far as like my studying and my routine, you know, I studied no less than three hours a day for an entire month. Some days I studied for four or five hours. Some days the, the, the highest uh, amount of time that I studied in one day was seven hours total. Right. But, you know, I studied no less than three hours a day in order to pass this exam. So I hope that that was helpful for some of y'all out there. Right. Hey, guys, so I hope you enjoyed today's content. All right. Like I mentioned, this is nothing that you cannot do. Go ahead and knock it out, get it started, move on to the next one, all right? So if all y'all can do me a favor, go ahead and click like on the video, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can see all the videos I upload, as soon as I upload them, and I'll holler at y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. It was I Says Me, Cisco Soldier, a.k.a. Uncle Trey. Holler at y'all. Ah.